Centripetal force occurs in the loops of a roller coaster. A roller coaster of mass M is moving through loops. Each loop has radius R and the track is frictionless. At points A, B, C, D, and E show all forces and write the sum of the forces that are inward and outward. At point A, the Earth's gravity pulls the mass downward against the track and in reaction the track pushes upward with the normal reaction force. We choose the inward forces to be positive. Since the weight mg points inward toward the center of the circle, we write plus mg. Since the normal force points away from the center of the circle, we write minus n equals mv squared over r. At point b, the weight is downward and outward, and the normal force is inward and positive. So we have the sum of the inward and outward forces is plus n minus mg equals mv squared over r. At point B, the roller coaster begins moving along the circular loop. This is the same thing as occurred in the previous video when you ran along the flat ground that suddenly sloped upward in a circular curve, making your knees and legs buckle a little. After point B, the cart wants to continue moving in a straight line forever, but it runs into the track. As the cart pushes against the track, the track pushes back with the normal force, and this force changes the cart's direction of travel. With roller coasters bolted to the ground, the force of the car on the track isn't so apparent. But in the space shuttle, we can see the car and the track pushing on each other. At point C, the weight points straight to the center of the Earth and is not involved in the sum of the inward and outward forces. The normal force points inward, and we have the sum of the inward or outward forces equals plus n equals mv squared over r. The same thing occurs at point E where the sum of the inward and outward forces is plus n equals mv squared over r. At point D, the weight is downward and inward and positive, and the normal force is also downward and inward and positive. So the sum of the inward and outward forces is plus n plus mg equals mv squared over r. During the roller coaster ride, points A and D are special. The ride is designed so that the normal force goes to zero at those points, making you lose contact with the seat for a moment. You feel as if you are hovering in midair and are going to leave the cart. I guess that it is more fun if we think we are about to die. Not for me. Every sort of spinning ride leaves me dizzy for days. When the normal force is zero, then mg equals mv squared over r. And after canceling the mass of the rider, we have v equals the square root of rg. The coaster is designed such that the velocity equals the square root of rg at points a and d, so that we feel as if we are leaving the seat. If r equals 10 meters, then v equals 9.9 .9 meters per second, which is about 22 miles per hour. If r equals 50 meters, then v equals 22 meters per second, which is 48 miles per hour. One biologist grew chicken eggs in a centrifuge at 2.5 g, making strong bones and heart in the adult of weight.
2.5 mg. If the radius of the centrifuge is 1 meter, what is its frequency? Please show that if the centripetal force equals 2.5 times the weight mg equals 4 pi squared mrf squared, then f equals 0 0.79 per second. I guess if you want your child to be superhuman, you just have to live in a centrifuge. What is the centripetal force on this child? We use the video timer to measure the time needed for one complete revolution, which is the period. The radius of the circular motion is 4 meters. For a radius of 4 meters, a period of 23 seconds, and a mass of 17 kilograms, the centripetal force is 5 fig newtons, which is 3% of her weight. Her teddy bear is sitting on the floor of the merry-go-round as it spins. We still have article 4 meters and a period equals 23 seconds. What well, must be the coefficient of static friction to hold the teddy bear in place? We choose the positive x-axis to be inward toward the center of the circle. The y-axis is upward like normal. The forces that act on the teddy bear are the downward weight and the upward normal force. In the vertical direction, the sum of the y components of forces equals plus n minus mg equals zero. So in this situation, the normal force, n equals mg, and so the static frictional force, which is always mu sub s times n, equals mu sub s times mg. In the horizontal direction, the bear would slide outward, but the static frictional force points inward and supplies the centripetal force needed to make the bear travel in a circle. The sum of the inward and outward forces equals plus Fs equals mv squared over r. We'll use the form 4m pi squared r over t squared since we know r and t. But a minute ago we decided that the static frictional force equals mu sub s times mg. We can cancel the m. Please show that mu sub s equals 0 0.033. A car of mass 1,000 kilograms is traveling with velocity v on a circular path of radius 150 meters. If the maximum coefficient of static friction between the tire and the road is 0 0.8, what can be the maximum velocity of the car before it flies off the road? The forces on the car are the inward maximum static frictional force, its downward weight, and the upward normal force. Place the positive x-axis inward. Static friction supplies the inward force. It is static friction, not kinetic friction, because the car has no motion in the radio or inward direction. In the vertical direction, the sum of the y components of forces equals plus n minus mg equals zero, so the static frictional force equals mu s times mg. The sum of the inward or outward forces equals plus static friction equals mv squared over r equals mu s mg. Please show that the velocity equals 34 meters per second and that the centripetal force acting on the car is 7800 newtons. If the speed of the car is greater than 34 meters per second, the static frictional force will not be able to keep the car moving in a circle of radius 150 meters. The car will slip outward. 
Another way to force a car into circular motion is to tilt the roadway so that an inward component of the normal force supplies the centripetal force, as done in the next example. Circular roadway here is banked by a few degrees. Even if a roadway is covered in ice so that the friction is zero, the inward component of the normal force can supply the centripetal force to make the car move in a circle. Here is a sketch. The forces acting on the car are the downward weight and the normal force, which is perpendicular to the incline. The incline has angle theta. Point the positive x-axis inward toward the center of the circle. The weight points entirely in the minus y direction, but the normal force must be broken into x and y components. Reviewing the video on the angles of the incline, we see that theta occurs between the plus y axis and the normal force. The x part of the normal force equals n sine theta because this side of the triangle is opposite the angle. And the y component of the normal force is n cosine theta because this side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle theta. The sum of the y components of forces equals plus n cosine theta minus mg equals zero. The sum of the inward and outward components equals n sine theta, because this portion is inward, equals mv squared over r. Form tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta we'll write n sine theta over n cosine theta. But n sine theta is mv squared over r, and n cosine theta is mg. Canceling the m's, we get v squared over gr, which is independent of the mass of the vehicle. In the video, v equals 12 meters per second, and r equals 180 meters. Please show that theta equals 4.7 degrees. Some of us have a lucky charm that hangs from the rear view mirror of our car. If you drive in a circle of radius r at constant velocity, then the lucky charm will hang at an angle theta from the vertical. The forces that act on the lucky charm are the downward weight and the tension in the string. Here is the free body diagram. Both angles are the same because we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We point the positive x-axis inward toward the center of the circle. The weight points entirely in the minus y direction, but the tension must be broken into x and y components. The sum of the y components of forces is plus t cosine theta minus mg equals zero. The sum of the inward or outward forces is T sine theta equals mv squared over r. The inward component of the tension supplies the centripetal force. As in the previous problem with the banked highway curve, form tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, we'll write T sine theta over T cosine theta. But T sine theta is mv squared over r and t cosine theta is mgr, so we get tan theta equals v squared over gr, which is independent of the mass of the lucky charm. When theta equals 9 degrees and r equals 14 meters, what is the velocity? Please show that v equals 4.7 meters per second. If we suddenly realize that we are driving toward a wall, we have to choose whether to turn the car to a side or to slam on the brakes to stop the car. Which should we do? When we slam on the brakes, how far do we travel before kinetic friction stops our car? Given the values x0 equals 0, a final velocity of 0, and an initial velocity that's given, we write the acceleration is the force over the mass equals mu k 
times g. We use this equation to obtain x equals v0 squared divided by 2 mu kg. If we instead choose to turn the car, then the static frictional force has to supply the centripetal force. We have the centripetal force Fc equals mu s mg equals mv squared over r, where this velocity is the same as v0. Solving for r, we get v squared over 2 mu s g. Dividing x by r, we see that x equals 1 half times the ratio mu s over mu k times r. The ratio is always a little bit greater than 1. We conclude that it is better to stop than turn. For car tires on pavement, the stopping distance x is about half the radius r of the circular path traveled at constant velocity. The tension in the child's arms is the same as the tension in mom's arms. The inward component of this tension supplies the centripetal force to make the child move in a circle. This bat is tied to a string while it is flying around in a circle. The period of the motion is the time for one complete revolution, which is one second. The forces on the creature are the downward weight and the tension T that acts at this angle theta. Point the positive x-axis inward toward the center of the circular motion. Here is the free body diagram. Both angles are the same because we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. The weight points entirely in the minus y direction, but the tension must be broken into x and y components. The sum of the y components of forces equals plus t cosine theta minus mg equals zero, because there is no motion or acceleration in the y direction. The sum of the forces that are inward or outward equals t sine theta equals mv squared over r, and we'll choose to use the version 4m pi squared r over the period squared because we know the period. The centripetal force is provided by the inward portion of the tension, which is t sine theta. Once again, we form tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, which we'll write as t sine theta over t cosine theta. But t sine theta is 4m pi squared r over the period squared, and t cosine theta is mg. After canceling the mass, we get 4 pi squared r over g t squared, which is independent of the mass of the bat. When the period t equal 1 second, and the radius of the circle is r equal 11 centimeters, what is the angle? Please convert centimeters to meters and show that theta equals 24 degrees which can be read from the tilting protractor. If the mass of the bat is 0.25 kilogram, please show that the tension in the string is 2.7 flying fig newtons. Race cars travel around this circular track that is steeply banked, like driving around the inside of a funnel. Here is a cross section. This is the figure that we looked at in the past that contains all the angles of the inclined plane. Here is the car. The forces that act on the car are the downward weight and the normal force. There is also a static frictional force that points up the hill or down the hill depending on the situation. If the race car tries to go faster and faster, do you believe that it would move upward along the incline? and this would make the frictional force point down the incline. When the car is moving at a constant velocity that is as great as possible without sliding up the hill, this is actually a static frictional force because there is no motion up or down the incline surface. When the velocity is too high, 
The car wants to slide up the ramp, and this makes static friction point down the ramp. When the velocity is too low, the car wants to slide down the ramp, and this makes static friction point up the ramp. To travel at a constant height on the track, there is a maximum velocity and a minimum velocity that is possible with this ramp angle and its static friction coefficient. For high velocities, static friction points downhill. The sum of the y components of forces is n cosine theta minus mg minus fs sine theta equals zero. But the static frictional force is always the coefficient of static friction times the normal. So this is n cosine theta minus mg minus mu sub s n sine theta equals zero. Please solve this for n. The sum of the forces that point inward or outward is n sine theta plus fs cosine theta equals mv squared over r. Please substitute n. For the minimum velocity, static friction points uphill. The sum of the vertical components of forces is n cosine theta minus mg plus fs sine theta equals zero, where the static frictional force fs equals mu s times n. So this becomes n cosine theta minus mg plus mu s n sine theta equals zero. The sum of the forces that point inward or outward is n sine theta minus fs cosine theta equals mv squared over r. Substituting fs with mu s n, this becomes n sine theta minus mu s n cosine theta equals mv squared over r. This mass is tied on a string and swinging as a pendulum. The forces acting on the mass are the weight and the tension. Here is a free body diagram. The string makes an angle theta with the vertical. Point the x-axis inward toward the center of the circle. The tension lies entirely along the inward direction. Only a portion of the weight lies in the outward direction. The sum of the inward and outward forces is plus t minus mg cosine theta equals mv squared over r. V is the tangential velocity, which occurs in the y direction. This gives t equals mg cosine theta plus mv squared over r. The tension in the string is changing with the angle. If you were holding the top of the string, you'd have to tug harder as the mass moved through the low point in its path. 